Hi everyone and welcome back to Sunday School. My name is Miss Chelsea and we are on session 10 of Virtual Sunday School. This video is for ages 6 through 8. If you'd like to follow along with our activities today, you will need to print out a couple things. First, you will need the worksheet, The Birthright, Stop and Pray. And then you will need the worksheet, The Birthright, Connected to God. You'll also need some things to color with, crayons, markers. Um, and you will also need something to write with, too. Finally, if you want to follow along with our Bible story, you'll need your Bible, of course. Um, or if you don't have a Bible, um, you can pull up your internet search bar and you can type in the Bible verse and you can follow al along with that online with us. All right, so pause the video, grab those things, and we'll be back. Alrighty, so we are once again in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 25. So if you're in your Bible, you're looking for the really big 25. And then we're looking at verses 29 through 34. So those are the tiny little 29 through the tiny little 34. If you're typing it into your search bar, you'll just need to type in Genesis 25, 29 through 34. The translation I'm reading is today's English version. We're continuing our story of the twins, Jacob and Esau. One day, while Jacob was cooking some bean soup, Esau came in from hunting. He was hungry and said to Jacob, I'm starving. Give me some of that red stuff. Jacob answered, I will give it to you if you give me your rights as the firstborn son. Esau said, all right, I am about to die. What good will my rights do me? Jacob answered, first, make a vow that you will give me your rights. Esau made the vow and gave his rights to Jacob. Then Jacob gave him some bread and some soup. He ate and drank and then got up and left. That was all Esau cared about his rights as the firstborn son. So this story might be a little confusing if you don't know what the rights of a firstborn son is, okay? So Esau is the oldest twin, which means he is the firstborn son. And back in Bible times, if you were the firstborn son, that meant you had certain rights that your siblings didn't have. So if you were the firstborn son, you got a lot of money, or you might have gotten a lot of land or a lot of the farm animals. It was a really good deal if you were the firstborn son. Jacob is not the firstborn son, so he did not have that birthright. He would not have gotten those things. So he tricks Esau into giving him that birthright. How does he do it? He tells Esau that he can have a bowl of soup if he will give him his rights to be the firstborn son. It's not a very good trade, but somehow he does manage to trick Esau into giving him those rights. So let's talk about our faith word this week. It starts with a B. Anyone remember what it is? Blessing. All the things God provides. All the things God provides. So God provided both Jacob and Esau some good things in this story. They both had parents that loved them very much. But Esau might have seemed like he was a little more blessed than Jacob because he had the birthright um, being the firstborn son. Who do you think did the right thing in our story today? Well, honestly, I think both twins didn't make very good choices. Jacob was being really sneaky when he kind of stole the birthright away from Esau. But Esau didn't make a very good choice either. He basically gave away this blessing that he had to his brother for a bowl of soup. Sometimes making choices is hard. Maybe Jacob and Esau should have stopped and thought about their choices before they made them. We're going to have a chance to talk about some choices that you might have in your life today. I'm going to read um, a little scenario for you, and I want you to think about you can pause the video and maybe talk about it with the people in your house. What you would do in each of these situations, okay? So here's the first one. 
Your parents ask you to clean your room, but you like playing with your toys. What choice do you make? Well, it's probably a good thing to listen to your parents since your parents provide you with so many great things in your life. What choice would you make? Let's do the next one. You are using your favorite electronic, but your friend wants to play with you. What choice do you make? Hmm. Well, that can be hard, especially if you're in the middle of a game. That's really fun. But our friends are a blessing to us, too. So it's probably a good idea to play with your friends. All right, let's do one more. You want to go outside and ride your bike, but you still have homework to finish. What choice do you make? Well, schoolwork is really important, and we're very blessed to be able to go to school. Maybe we're not going in person to school, but however you're going to school, you're very blessed to be able to go. Uh, so it's probably a good idea to finish your homework, and then maybe you get to ride your bike. I'm sure you guys made great choices, much better choices than Jacob or Esau. All right. In the Bible story, Esau quickly decided to give up his birthright. He did not think through his actions. What might have happened if Esau had stopped and prayed to God before he made such a big decision? We're going to talk about some big decisions that you might have had to make in your life. So go ahead and get out your birthright stay and pray, or excuse me, stop and pray worksheet. The directions say sometimes we have hard decisions to make. Esau made a hard and fast decision because he was really hungry. But I wonder what might have happened if Esau had stopped and talked to God. Are there things you need to talk to God about? Has there ever been a time when you had to make a hard choice? What did you do? Write or draw about it. So you're going to either draw or write about a time that you had to make a big choice and a big decision um, and what you did about it. So go ahead, pause the video. And we'll be back to talk about it. All right. So what was the big choice that you had to make in your life? Did you pray about it? Maybe you talked to your mom or dad about it before you had to make the choice. Hopefully you weren't like Esau and just made a quick choice because you were hungry. Today, I drew, um, it's not a very exciting picture, but I drew P-A and O-H with a little question mark between it because um, I had to make a big choice once about whether I was going to move to Pennsylvania or move to Ohio. And that was a really big choice that I had to make. And I definitely prayed about it. And I definitely talked to my family about it before I made that decision. Alrighty. So we know that it's sometimes a good thing to pray before we make big decisions. We're going to go through a little prayer that you can say anytime you have to make a big decision in your life. And it's got some motions that go with it. So do this with me. First, you're going to say, stop. Pray. God is with me every day. Let's try that again. Stop. Pray. God is with me every day. One more time. Stop pray. God is with me every day. And that's a short little prayer that you can do before you have to make any big decisions. All right. You can practice this prayer at home and during times you need to talk to God when you have a difficult choice to make. We have one more worksheet to do together. So go ahead and grab your birthright connected to God. <clears throat> And on this worksheet, it's a connect the dots to see the picture sheet. So you're going to find the number one. Where's the number one? Oh, it's right down here. You're going to start with the number one. And then you're going to go in number order from one to two to three and so on and so on and so on. All right. Pause the video. Get to work. <clears throat> All right. We're back. I want to show you how my picture turned out. See if it turned out like yours. Ta-da! 
we have a lovely picture of praying hands to remind us to pray before we make choices. Awesome. God tells each of us that our bless, uh, excuse me, God tells us that each of us are a blessing no matter what. And I hope you remember that this week. Let's go ahead and fold our hands, close our eyes and pray together. Dear God, help us to be a blessing and to share our blessings with others. Amen. Thank you so much for coming to Sunday School. I hope to see you next week. Bye.